Good morning, friends. Welcome to today's daily news analysis of 17th November 2022. I am Ashley. Look at first significance lake. Today is World Tree Maturity Day. It is observed to raise awareness of tree term birth and concern of tree term babies and their families. Okay. Next is National Journalism Day. Another freedom of speech, thoughts, and virtues as well as role of freedom. It's a day to celebrate that. And the next thing is today is National Epilepsy Day. It is celebrated to focus the epilepsy disease, its symptom and prevention. These are the three significance. Okay. So the vetta matra ke poor adu naale yeh camera off hui hui chidi thara top. So first of all we will move on to the first piece. War causing immense human suffering. G20. So, the American leaders of G20 grouping on Wednesday said it was essential to uphold international law and the multi multilateral system as today's era must not be of war. In a joint declaration, both out. At the end of G20 summit in Bali, Indonesia, the member states said the Ukraine war was causing economic difficulties and insecurity worldwide, and the threat of using nuclear weapon was inadmissible. And uh, the declaration revealed that not all member states condemned the Russian action against Ukraine. Most members strongly condemned the war and stressed it causing immense human sufferings and exacerbating uh, existing fragilities in the global economy. Constrained growth, increasing inflation, disruption, sub disrupting supply chain, hiding energy and food security are elevating financial stability, stability risk, it said. Following the summit, the Foreign Ministry, uh, Foreign Secretary Vinay Mohan Kwatara uh, said the outcome document was adopted through consensus. So, uh, Prime Minister Modi and other leaders attending G20 summit in Bali plan mangroves in Nurga Rai Forest, uh, Forest Park on Wednesday. G20 leaders all the mango forest okay. And now the joint declaration says the conflict is exacerbating existing fragilities in the global economy. Constraint growth, threatening energy and food security are elevating financial stability risk.
നെക്സ്റ്റ് ന്യൂസ് ആർട്ടിക്കിൾ ഈസ് ബാൻ ഓൺ ഓൺലൈൻ ഗാമ്പിംഗ് ഇറ്റ് ടു ബി എൻഫോഴ്സ്ഡ് സ്റ്റേറ്റ് ടെൽസ് ഹൈക്കോർട്ട് അപ്പൊ ഈ ഓൺലൈൻ ഗാമ്പിംഗ് എന്താണെന്ന് നിങ്ങൾക്ക് അറിയായിരിക്കും അല്ലെ ഓൺലൈൻ ആയിട്ടുള്ള ഗെയിമിംഗ് പ്രസന്റ്ലി ഓൺലൈൻ ഗെയിമിംഗ് ഫാൾസ് ഇൻ ദ റെഗുലേറ്ററി ഗ്രേ ഏരിയ ആൻഡ് ദർ ഇസ് നോ കോംപ്രഹെൻസീവ് രജിസ്ട്രേഷൻ വിത്ത് റെസ്പെക്ട് ടു ലീഗാലിറ്റി ഗെയിംസ് ബേസ്ഡ് ഓൺ സ്കിൽസ് ആർ അലൌഡ് ദിസ് ഇസ് എ മോസ്റ്റ് പാർട്ട് ഓഫ് ദ കൺട്രി വൈൽ ഗെയിംസ് ഓഫ് ചാൻസ് ആർ കാറ്റഗറൈസ്ഡ് അണ്ടർ ഗാമ്പിംഗ് Like treated as immoral and prohibited in most part of the country. A betting and gambling is a state subject. Different states have their own legislation. So, you can see all the states in the country. That's why you can see. Any state except Goa, Sikkim and uh, Union Territory of Daman. Prohibit sorting of gambling, betting and or wagering of the games of chance. Assam, Andhra Pradesh, Nagaland, Odisha, Tamil Nadu, Selangana have placed restrictions on the game as well. But recently, Kerala High Court accepted the stance of industry that games of skill should not trigger ban on gambling. Okay. now we we'll move on to the next slide other reasons to regulate on, on online gambling gaming economic benefit the online gaming industry is expected to generate revenue varumana undakkan vendi thanale in excess of rupees 29000 crore in 2025 over the 67.5 crore users it is estimated that more than 15000 direct and indirect jobs will be created GST and income tax generated from this industry will be added to the government's revenue and potential uh, to attract significant global investment current investment in gaming companies like dream 11 are good indicators offshore gambling website and the most of the be- most of betting in india is done on cricket matches adinaanu betting nadakkunnathu okay through websites like bet uh, beta way bet365 and the uh, father These websites are headquarters in Malta, Cyprus and Gibraltar but uh, are accessible to Indian users. Third party wallet. In India, third party wallet like Skrill and Nelly Netailer are used to funnel money into gambling sites. Uh, users deposit money from their bank account into these rapid in this uh, prepaid wallets uh, will be used to make payment anonymously. Threat to data privacy. And either uh, cheating, privacy violations, abuse and bullying in a car now. Okay. That is negativity, positivity. You don't have to worry about it. Okay. Betting and gambling. Online games are based on trade, traditional Ludo. Arguably the most popular online game in India have run into controversy and allegations for betting and gambling. now we will move on to the next news article c vision 2022 drill test security forces preparedness in state avo inathu endana c vision 2022 22 ennu varu it was conceptualized in 2018 to validate and you know, on various measures that have been instituted towards enhancing maritime security since 26 of 11 mumbai attack the exercise is being conducted by indian navy coordination with the indian Coast Guard and ministries entrusted with the task maritime activities. This exercise is a build up towards a major threat level readiness operational exercise, which is conducted by the Navy every two years. Okay. Threat level readiness operational exercise, TROPICS. This exercise will be undertaken along 7,516 km coastline of the country covering the exclusive economic zone of India, EEZ of India. 
relevance. Serial and tropic. And we will threat level readiness operational level exercise. Together we'll cover the entire spectrum of military security challenges. And see which will provide the opportunity at the apex level to access the preparedness in the domain of military security and coastal defense. See which will uh, we will 2022 will provide the realistic assessment of the strength and the weakens to strengthen maritime and national security for them. Very important uh, news article on CVGIL 22. Okay. Now, we'll move on to the next news article. Rock art symbols could point to arrival of humans at the end of the last ice age in the increase, says researchers. The first five symbol on rock art site in Iduhati in the increase district that closely resembled the symptom symbol used at rock and cave painting sites in Europe conclude point to arrival of the modern humans in the Middle East between 1,000 and 4,000 years ago. Janardhan Nanjudan of uh, Tulitai village, National Geographic Certified Educator, Ecologist and Researcher has been documenting the rock art site at Idumati, around uh, 20 km from Uda uh, uh, Gamandala. Okay. After consulting leading paleo Anthropologist from across the world, he believes that a small band of modern humans there made uh, their way across Europe and Asia and into the India during the end of the last ice age. Uh, uh, Paleo anthropologist and leading a uh, rock art researcher identified 32 geometric signs of Ice Age Europe, which has seen in the remarkable commonality in the case of rock art site across Europe. At Iduhati, five of these symbols, the circle, cordiform, dot, finger, fretting, and quadrangle, names given to identify the different symbols are seen. Another quote that is either five symbols. Are seen in the world. Okay. Uh, ochre is a natural pigment, predominantly just an iron oxide with varying degrees of water molecules, which yield different colors from yellow to black. Heat treating ochre causes a chemical change and make it real, really vibrant. Ochre is a mineral. It doesn't wash away or weak, allowing it to persist throughout the age and straw ancestral homo species started during the Occur over 2002 lakh, uh, 25 lakh years ago, he explains. Without a double, these signs are um, meaningful to the to these creators. Okay, it's a theory. Uh, I hear the side need protection. symbols I see in the phone. It is the symbols. All of the kitty road that some bone that you do side. Uh, in detail, I to there are there are said to be ten rock art sites in the Greece, each of which has unique history. He says, "Okay, we need to ensure that the signs and symbols of all the rock art sites are carbon dated, uh, carbon dated, and photographed, so that uh, anthropologists can." 
study them in greater detail before they are disappear or get damaged. Now we will move on to the next news article. India has shown how to democratize technology for good humanity. India had shown how to democratize technology for the good of humanity, said PM Modi. Okay, on 25th edition of Karnataka's Tech Exposition, Bangalore Tech Summit. Uh, in Bangalore via a video link on Wednesday. For a long time, technology has been uh, was seen as an exclusive domain. It was said uh, to be only for high and mighty. India has shown how to democratize technology, she said. India uh, has to show, a, to show how to give tech a human touch. Technology in India is force of equality and empowerment. The world's largest health insurance scheme, Aishman Bharat, provides a safety of Nearly 200 million families and about 600 million people. About a complete technological base done, right? About Aishman Bharat, the one in the scheme of Alvakaidu, Aru Aru million of Aru left the game, other world and even though million of family left the game, Jay the Kundanava Kanaka. Okay, this program is based on tech fact platform. India is organized to the world's largest COVID. Vaccine drive again a tech based platform. COVID uh, said that PM. And I mean, a core platform, so Ella than a year to recent past and another than Ella online item and tech related item and Ayana in the other day. And uh, we are using drones to map land in rural area. Then property cards are given uh, to the people. This reduces land dispute. This it also helps in the poor to access financial service and credit. Okay. Abam, India is using technology as a weapon in its war against poverty. And in poverty, there is no way to use technology in a way. And technology has helped the business, small business, find big customers. At the same time, it has reduced the scope of corruption. Inviting the global uh, business community to invest in India, he said, India has many excellent factors coming together. Your investment uh, and our innovations can do wonder here. Your trust and our tech talent can make India things happen. I invite you all to work with us as we lead to the world in solving its problem. Now we will move to the editorial. This unseating of vice chancellor is faulty. When an Abdigam Elamura could think now, sit in a Pochakari Matra and Nalika share in relation to you. Two recent judgments of Supreme Court in India uh, of the appointment of the vice chancellors in state universities in violation of the regulation of UGC, University Grants Commission are significant in context of higher education at federal countries such as India. In the first case, uh, Gambi then K okay, Gandhi versus the state of Gujarat from Sardar Patel University. About what scenarios are I on? Second case in the Kerala, Professor Srijit versus Doctor versus uh, Okay. In second case, and down the other side, uh, Sriji's uh, in Kerala case, on uh, Sriji's PS versus Dr. Rajasri MS. Okay, with the bench of justice, Mr. Shah and M. Sudarsh. Okay, a conclusion that is faulty. The court conclusion uh, that uh, the provisions of state universities act. are uh, repugnant of uh, UGC regulations under Article 
54 is 40. There are several reasons for saying this. First, a careful reading of Article 254 was showed that the repugnancy uh, under this article relates to a state law and a substancy law made by Parliament. Okay. In a third, the Constitution does not, uh, in the general terms, define the term law. Inclusive definition of the law is in Article 13, Article 13 of 2, is applicable to only to that article. It is no application to other articles, which means the term does not, uh, term law does not include the regulations, rules, etc. for the purpose of Article 254. So for the regulations made by the subordinate authority of union overriding a law made by state legislature, will amount to a violation of federal principle and a negation of concurrent legislative power granted to the state by the constitution. It is also an issue that has bounded to the state uh, right. The Supreme Court did not, in a case above the analyzed concept of repugnancy before the holding the state university laws as repugnant to UGC regulations. And therefore, the appointments are void Article 254 needs to be analyzed in depth before reaching such conclusion. Such an analysis would make it clear that the state law can be written only to the Central Act and no more regulations are and rules are made there under. Since this issue is bounded with the right of state to manage university education. That's it. Now we will move on to the next news article. India's G20 presidency will be inclusive action of it. Okay. Now, G20, who are the members of G20? G20 the members of the G20. Once we do that. Spain as permanent member, not member invited also attend the leaders of this. Now, we are the leaders and member nations of the G20. Just a minute. And what is the structure and functioning of G20? The G20 presidency rotates annually according to the system that ensures a regional balance of voting. The selections of presidency in 19 countries unsupervised. Okay, members and every year G20 elects a country from either group, uh, another group of presidents. India is uh, in group two. This was uh, has Russia, South Africa, and two. The G20 does not have a permanent secretariat or headquarters. Instead, G20 president is responsible for bringing together G20 agenda in constitution, in consultation with the members and in response to the developments in the global economy. Every year, when new country takes the presidency, it works hand in hand with the previous presidency and next presidency, and it is collectively known as Torika. This ensures continuity and consistency of the group's agenda. Now, the priorities of the Indian priorities in the G20 summits in the Kiana, cutting the cost of remittance, taking tax regulations, full implementations of Paris Agreement, etc. What are the strengths or achievements of G20? Flexible, inclusive, coordinated action, facilitated, and increasing lending. Even Kiana strength to achieve. Of the achievements of the 20 environment. What could be the way forward? The G20 cannot be a pansy of world's form, but over the past 10 years, the G20 has been. An important form of international cooperation. Effective global governance like G20 is essential as a rising power. Okay. And um,
Use of dialogue and diplomacy should be carried out to resolve issues like Ukraine-Russia conflict and differences between Russia and the West. India should focus on utilizing the G20-2023 summit as a platform to raise discussions on issues such as aggressive trade barriers, sanctions, inter-country conflicts, and advocate for global peace and cooperation. Now, we will move to the next news article. India deploys new dogs upgrades in speed boat of Sanko, so petrol. But the army has deployed new landing dogs and speed boats for patrolling San, uh, Sanko, so in eastern Ladakh, marching the Chinese deployments on the lake. Uh, this is a part of an overall capability enhancement and infrastructure development taken up by India in 2020. Stand off to plug deficiencies and catch up with the Chinese building uh, up uh, along the line of factory front. The induction has given a huge impetus to our petroleum capability, and now we are having boats which match the adversity. Okay. And in early 2021, the army signed two contracts for landing craft and speedboat, which were de uh, deli uh, delivered in the second half of 2021. A 65 crore contract was signed for 12 special uh, specialized petrol craft with the Goa Shipyard Limited. The second contract of 17 troop carrying flat bottom fiberglass landing dogs was signed with a private manufacturer also in Goa. The new landing craft was also being deployed in the Reserve Creek in Gujarat, facing Pakistan, so stated. India has always uh, held until finger four, while it claims till finger eight, which is uh, where the Indian perceptions of land lies. Very important. Okay, the lake, a glacial melt, has mountain spurs of Chang Senmo range jutting down, referred to as fingers, and brackish water lake freezes in Gujarat. Okay, next is uh, India takes part in Moscow talks on forming inclusive government in Afghanistan. And India joined the latest meeting of Moscow format consultation on Afghanistan that, ha uh, that was held on Wednesday in Russian capital. The Moscow format, one of the several dialogue platforms on Afghanistan, which began before the Taliban takeover of Kabul, consists of Russia, China, Pakistan, Iran, Kazakhstan. And, okay, during the meeting, the participants discussed issues related to Afghanistan, including the current humanitarian situations of ongoing efforts of various stakeholders to provide assistance in intra-Afghan talks, formation of an inclusive and representative government efforts to counter threat of terrorism and ensuring regional security. The meeting was, an, uh, was announced earlier this month by Zamir uh, and a special representative of the president of Russia for Afghanistan. Okay.
preliminary effort uh, suggested uh, preliminary report suggested that the Wednesday talks were held without participations of any Taliban representatives. Taliban spokesperson are yet to explain the reason behind this absence. Okay, one of the important views on okay. So India joined the. India joined the latest meeting of Moscow format consultation on Afghanistan was held on Wednesday. That is the theme here. Okay. And uh, we will move on to the next news article. UK and India to launch a young professional exchange in 2023. So uh, British uh, Prime Minister will announce a new partnership with the India on Wednesday with the G20 summit in Bali. Downing Street uh, has announced. Under UK India Young Professionals schemes, the UK will offer annually 3,000 degree holding Indians in 18 to 30 years age group place to work in UK for up to two years. The scheme will commence early 2023 and uh, be on a reciprocal basis. Okay. Here, uh, the Indo Pacific was teaming with the Dynamic and fast growing economy, Mr. Sunak said, and uh, talks on finalizing a trade deal between the uh, countries are still underway, and prospect of them concluding before a Zimbabwe deadline was diminished in part due to comments by British Home, Home Secretary Sulla Berban, who had said Indians were the last largest group of visa over strayers in Britain. In parallel to Mobility partnership with India. We are also strengthening our ability to remove immigration offenders. Now we will move on to the next thing that is. MCQs. The term Hydra market recently seen in news is associated with the cyber security. Which of the following United States are major beneficiaries of Sapna Gemina Link Canal? It is option B, Haryana and Punjab. Consider the following statement regarding counter cyclical capital buffers framework in India. So, answer is option B, one and really. If the framework uh, has to create the credit to GDP gap as main indicator, it is not introduced by SEBI in 2015. So, it is one statement and two statement, and this is also good because it requires bank to build up a buffer of capital in good time. This may be used to maintain flow of credit to real sector in typical times. Next, uh, MCQ is which of the following states are trailed out of Assam since Indian independence? As is option C, Meghalaya and Mizoram. Is from Assam. With reference to municipal corporations, consider the following statements. They are established in union territories by act of parliament. They are established by state by the act in state by the act of consent state legislature. So, which is correct? It is answers C. Option C, both one and two. Next is the question where a uh, post cold uh, war geopolitical and geostrategic realities faced India. As net security provider in the Ocean region, discuss.
ഇന്ന് കുറെ അധികം ഐ ആർ റിലേറ്റഡ് ന്യൂസുകളായിരുന്നു കുറെ ഉള്ളത് ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നത് ഇത് സയൻസ് ആൻഡ് ടെക്നോളജിയായിട്ട് ബന്ധപ്പെട്ട ഒരു ന്യൂസ് ആണ് So friends, I hope you enjoyed today's session. Thank you for watching the news. Daily basis news in London. Thank you.